Hi there, we are back at the Goodwill down in, I was gonna say up, but for me it's down in Oxford, PA. It's actually in Avondale, PA. It's real easy to get to, it's right off the freeway. This is the very first thing that I found was this Sanibel pottery. It was not marked, but when I Google lensed the image of it, it comes up that it is a oil lamp. You can put a tea light in there, but when I put the tea light in, it wasn't very bright, but I still thought it was a very pretty piece. I had been here maybe two weeks ago, so they had changed over some of the inventory, which I was glad to see. I was also glad to see the shelves weren't empty. They were actually, it seemed like it was smaller in there. And the reason it was smaller is because they're starting to cut down the wall that separated. This used to be where the bins were. And so they're starting to cut down the wall between the store and where the bins are. So it'll be one huge Goodwill. This was Elizabeth Arden in the duck. Usually you see it in the cat. And then because I had the lighthouse with the sandpiper birds on it, I thought, oh, this would be kind of nice to go with it. It was very, very, very heavy. And that is why I didn't uh, purchase that. I try not to buy heavy, heavy items because then the shipping is heavy or heavy. <laughs> the shipping is, yeah, is heavy. It's a lot. So I decided against that bowl. This was pretty. I just picked up the cat light. And so this one, it was nice, but I didn't like how it sat on that resin base. And they had two little green vases for one money and then I decided to move on to another area I think this was a hobbyist piece kind of like a tea light I thought it was cute I liked how they painted the bat upside down on it they have a little bit bigger Halloween section than the Easter section I'm hoping the closer we get to spring they will bring out more Eastery items you can see how much Halloween they have here and then I thought these were interesting. There were four pieces and it looked like you put votives in the back of them. And then they had, I noticed they had whole, well, maybe there's five, looks like there's five. They had holes on either side of them, like they strung together. Maybe they strung together on the table because if, if I put candles in that, I would be nervous about hanging that with candles. I didn't see a price on it. And because we're not close to Halloween, even though I do sell Halloween year round, I decided against that. And I was making my way slowly down to the Easter items. Didn't really find anything, so I moved on. They still have this area kind of designated by colors and also by items. They have all the craft area, area together, all the dishes together, the glasses together. These are um, party light. Yep, these are all of them, the green. Eggplant? No oh, weird apple. And they have a pear and a pumpkin. It looks like oh a squash. Let's see how much they have those for. Three ninety nine. I thought this would be a great price that Goodwill was selling this for at three ninety nine. You can see some recent solds that they, so $3.99, that's a pretty good deal. And they were all there in the original box. The next thing I found was this bag of Ma Super Mario Brother plush. There are quite a bit in here. I tell you at the end of the video how many are in here. Only two did not have their little cardboard tags, but I thought I would give those a try. There was also this mid-century modern looking cat, probably from the 80s or 90s, but the gold on top, it was kind of dirty and I was afraid when I went to clean it, I might scrape off the gold. So I left that and moved on. And then these grabbed my attention. I thought they were very interesting. They had individual prices. It looks like they might've gone around a, a plant pot or something like that. And they had little sayings on them, but they were very dark, like some of, they weren't, perfectly done <laughs> and that seems kind of snotty because I didn't make them but they just seemed kind of overdone in some areas and not very great quality a cute idea though but I decided to leave those I was checking her out to see if she was marked I've been picking up a lot of glass lately so these grabbed my attention I thought they were very pretty and then this is a studio art piece it's an egg separator so you could crack your egg in there and get the white of the egg out of there and then this was really pretty this was also another signed studio art pottery kind of a ginger jar i believe it was from the 80s i really thought that was sweet it was had the design on both sides it was very very heavy though so that is why the ginger jar stayed there 
they have baker's racks for their displays of their of the hard goods so i have to remember to look up because they have things stacked on the very very top shelf so up here on the top shelf was a mary engelbright cardboard box i believe it was probably for wine and then i used to have these when i knitted all the time i used to use this stationery so that was funny that to bring that back i hadn't thought of those in a while and then here was a very uh, studly butterfly <laughs> I don't know why it had all those studs in it. Maybe something snapped onto it for design. I thought that was a little interesting. Now here, I did debate about these glasses because they had trains on them. And I know railroad and trains can be very popular. I didn't see a name, a maker's name on these glasses. I tried taking pictures of them to Google Lens them in the store, but it was hard to get a picture. So I tried putting the names that were on below the trucks or be, be, below the cars and I just could not find I just couldn't find sold comps or even selling comps for these so I thought about it for a little bit and then I decided against it so weird how it has this yeah. it has chips on it right from that non-skid price brothers get that out On an end cap was this vase and it was marked made in Thailand. I get a little close while I <laughs> peel back the sticker, still holding you. Um, I thought it was interesting how the sides pinched in a little bit. I thought that was interesting. In the toy section, they have a whole bunch of puzzles. So I always look to see if there's puzzles that are new in the package. The one that I'm holding was new in the package, but I decided against that. There are certain brands that I can't think of off the top of my head, but when I do see them in real life, I, I know that, hey, let's look that up. This was a really pretty, sparkly, shiny mosaic bottle. I wonder if someone made this or if it was sold that way. I would hope someone made that because there was a lot of effort going into that. This grabbed my attention because I like the vintage, well, they, they're vintage, but uh, remember the cake candles from the 90s? I just picked up a cake candle at the Effort of Goodwill. I love finding those candles. They bring back such great memories and I think they smell really well. So that's why I looked at that candle because it reminded me of a cake candle. The Southwestern design on these two trivets caught my attention and I decided against those. It was nice they had them bundled together and they also had these bundled together. These were extremely heavy. I think they were probably made out of chalkware. There's a watercolor from 1953. I decided to walk around again because they were actively restocking. For a Saturday, I was surprised that they were restocking because usually on the weekends, they don't tend to, at least the ones around where I live. This was cute. They had all of the reindeer and they had the reindeer names on them, Vixen and Donner and Cupid and so on. I was looking to see if there was any really vintage old Christmas in the Christmas section. And then this divided dish, I knew it was going to be marked made in Japan. And sure enough, there it says made in Japan. It was nice that the handle was still with it. It probably would need to be um, replaced though, because it was showing a lot of wear. This was also made in Japan. This could be a divided dish, but it most likely is, I think, a sewing compartment thing. Usually when I see these, I think, oh, a divided dish for food, but it turns out it's sewing caddies. <laughs> then at first I thought that this was a silverware drawer but you probably already realized that it's not, but it took me a while. When I opened it up, I realized, oh, this is probably an art box, like an easel. And then there's the drawers for your paintings and things. And then I didn't see these the first time I walked through. They were on the back. You saw me pick them up. <laughs> They're kind of hidden on the back shelf there. They are signed. I have tried to look up the name that is on the back of them. It's V. Lanel or V. Lavelle, either way. I cannot find the name of them, but I think they are so nice. 
they have kind of that scrigifo scr or scredifo, it's the Italian word for when they, when you kind of draw into the clay. I thought they were very, very pretty. And then I'm showing you this uh, Tokidoki <laughs> unicorn horse zebra thing. I picked that up for Jenny because I thought she would like it and she did. And then um, here I'm telling you, I am going to go for the Super Mario Brother figurines. The music was playing a little loud. So even though I was talking to you at the time, I noticed I need to do a little vo voiceover so that they wouldn't charge me for playing the background music on my video. Here was a toast holder but it was more of a contemporary one. It had sugar cane and coffee beans on either side of it. When I saw this candle holder, I thought it was super pretty with that cardinal on it. And I was thinking, this kind of reminds me of Westmoreland glass. And it turns out it is Westmoreland glass. The inside had a candle with some wax paper on it. It was hard to get out. I tried the putting it in the freezer, but I couldn't get it out. What I ultimately ended up doing was just melting the candle all the way to the base of it and then was able to remove the candle that way <laughs> and it was very pretty lit up you will see how pretty it looks at the end of the video these were all individually priced canisters i do like the temptations uh but it's so darn heavy that's the only drawback to it i guess it's heavy to so it will withstand you know everyday use but it is a shame it's so darn heavy because some of the things are really super cute i thought this was made of capizio shells and then i did look up this this is a boyd's bear votive candle holder that was super cute it doesn't really sell for too high of a money but if you walked in and needed some kind of wintry de decor for your house super cute great price and then you can see again i'm going through the christmas again uh trying to find the vintage things couldn't didn't really find anything but i i tried i tried here's a cart that they were restocking this uh bird on top was what grabbed my attention it looked like a different uh like a swan and a duck had a baby <laughs> it was marked made in italy on the bottom i did seriously consider getting it and then i noticed there was some chipping on the the head feathers there but isn't it cute i thought you would enjoy seeing it it was very different looking i did put it back up there a, a lady did come by and we remarked about how unusual that that bird looked i thought this might be um early american pressed glass with the daisy and buttons, but I wasn't quite sure. There was only the one piece, so I decided to leave that and went around on the back side here. They had this uh, lucite trivet, had these really pretty dried flowers in it, but it did have some deep scratches. I know some people have told me that there is, I forget what it is, but I have been told you can rub some kind of secret elixir <laughs> to minimize the scratching on lucite, but I don't remember what it is. And I thought that these were a great deal. Each of these bags were $2.99. And I had to do the smell test on them to make sure they didn't have any kind of smell. They don't. This is discontinued yarn by Lion Brand. And they had yellow and purple. Definitely enough to make a blanket. And speaking of blankets, I decided to go look through their blankets. This was really nicely done. I don't know if someone made this or if this was machine made or mass produced, but I thought it was very pretty and I like the design on it. And then I realized it's not a blanket. It's a mermaid tail blanket. Look at that, isn't that cute? So I think maybe someone did make that. It's very nice. Someone ultimately made it either, either at a factory or on their own. This little weirdo lady had to show that to you. And then this is a Build-A-Bear sea turtle. When I do see the Build-A-Bears all dressed up in clothing with the shoes and everything, I do take the time to look them up to see if they are worth a lot of money. This little guy wasn't, but what a great gift if you needed a gift or toy for your child or someone that you know has a birthday coming up. That's a cute little sea turtle. Then I was looking at the rest of the toys to see if there was anything exciting in there. This was a different doll. What's her face? <laughs> you could draw on the doll's face. That's an interesting idea. These were marked made in Japan in the original box, but the style of them, they were baseball players. The style of them, I didn't really think was that great. So I left those. This was an interesting kind of a Capa de Monte piece. I think it was a hobbyist piece. I was surprised that there wasn't a lot of chipping to the flowers. There was a repair there on the edge of it. It was an uh, interesting look to it. I wanted to see what that dish is that I just pointed at. 
was, so I had to remove the stacks. I was thinking that it kind of looked like a blue onion, the little handle peeking out there. And then once I removed the other china, I realized, yes, that is a blue onion pattern. It did have a mark on it. There was only one, um, so I left it. <laughs> and then I spied these on a bottom shelf. There's two of them. They were bundled together, which was great. They are vintage made in Japan. It's bamboo, woven bamboo uh, serving trays. They're in really great shape. And I like the mid-century modern look to them. I was taking them apart to see what the other one was. And I was pleasantly surprised that they were matchies. So we have uh, two of the same trays. And let's see, oh, this is the last thing I found. So when I walked by, the design on the coat caught my eye, and you can see it's Anthropology. And I know nothing about fashion, but I do know that is a that's a fancy name brand. Now you saw the original price tag, and look, Goodwill had it for eighty dollars. It was a really nice coat, though. And we're going to wrap up our trip to Goodwill with the first praying hands of twenty twenty three. I wanted to thank Josie, who lives in Oregon, for the friend mail that she sent. I opened it up, and there are these four, and Jenny's standing next to me, because she doesn't know what they are. I know what they are. Hi. Now, <laughs> Jenny, do you see one that Josie made for you? Yes. <laughs> okay, and then look at the other, the other side. Oh, that's so cute. Isn't that neat? And then look at this side. They're piggies. Aw. And then this side, it's beautiful orange. All right, now. Look like feathers. Though they do kind of look like feathers, so that's a good idea. Jenny's getting over a cold. All right, so what do you think this clever lady, Josie in Oregon, did with these? They look like squares, right? Mm -hmm. But they kind of have a... Triangle square. Yeah, they kind of have like a triangle shape to them. Look what they're for. She says they're for microwaving oh. in the microwave. They're microwave safe, so they save your hands from burning that's on the smart. bowls isn't that great mm -hmm. so she wasn't sure what jimmy's favorite color is uh, but my favorite color is any non-color <laughs> well he well J jenny says that because he likes brown and black <laughs> he also likes purple but um and he i think his real favorite color is blue and green actually <laughs> <laughs> but josie wasn't quite sure what his favorite color is so she made an orange one which is perfect because orange is one of my favorite colors i actually do love orange and pink together but i will promise to share it with jimmy but isn't that so clever that's so mm -hmm. clever of you josie Look at that. Even to like keep your, you know, it, it warm after it's heated mm -hmm. up. So I wanted to give an extra special thank you to Josie for making those for us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And here is everything that I picked up on this recent trip to the Goodwill in Avondale. I hope you enjoyed this video and are having a great start to your week. And I'll see ya.